Show me Kasi. That's how you are. I don't know what you said, but it must have been Indian for handsome devil. This is such a work, and people are saying the best work of your career, but I got to be honest with you, I really feel like, and I'm sorry, Leo, this never happens when you're in a room. You stole the show. You stole the show from Leo. I mean, what does this mean to you in this project? What an incredible, incredible undertaking by you. Thank you. Um, yeah, I mean, I'm still a little perpetually stunned by it all myself. <laughs> but what it meant was an opportunity to, I guess... Try and create a world, try and create a character who, being based on a real person, to do so as I would expect somebody to come into my community and um, greet, perhaps like playing my great-grandmother Lily, who would have been Molly's contemporary. Um, the way that I would have wanted somebody to operate in that instance is the way, it's what I charged myself with in making this. And it's just, it's incredible that the story that was just not known for so long that Osage community themselves wouldn't speak about. Um, I've had fr I've made so many very, very close friends in Osage country that I see regularly. And some that are more in my generation say they grew up never even knowing who William Hale was because the community just completely stopped talking about him, cut him out of photos. Um, so to have so many Osage telling this story as well and to get to be a part of that and see this history have such a huge platform it's it's really it's really overwhelming and really exciting overwhelming is a great word to describe this film i mean it is just such a a difficult movie to watch and um as a first nations woman myself i i feel like i am hoping that in the future of hollywood we see native joy instead of these horrible genocides, because I feel like the story is always the same. Um, is there a story that you have now that this film is such a hit and you're such a breakout star of it that you would love to tell and you would love to take like, to Marty or Leo and say, okay, let's do this one next, where she is, you know, on fire and she's, you know, incredible and she's happy. For sure. And I already have this guy's immense support for a biopic that I want to bring out that showcases native joy and native excellence in an area that we're not used to seeing and don't know. I mean, he loves jazz and, you know, ragtime, that whole era of music so much. I feel like your your spectrum is uh, classic music from like the 20s, 30s, 40s, or 90s That's hip hop. My jam, baby. It's like there's no in between. <laughs> <laughs> true. But um, yeah, there's a, the first woman to ever sing in front of a big band it was a Coeur d'Alene woman named Mildred Bailey. I love it. And that's, that's a biopic that I would love that he also really wants to see and is being very encouraged. Let's do it. Yeah. Um, Leo, it's crazy after all of these years and all these years sitting in junket rooms with you and seeing your movies and, being, and watching you win awards and people love you, to say, like, this may be the best work of your career. I think you are phenomenal in this. Thank you. Very much. And do you ever just wake up in the morning and you're, like, tired of killing it? <laughs> <laughs> That is hilarious. Yeah, tone it down, guy. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? It, it's, uh, this is going to sound like a cliche, which it is. But this, you know, in a lot of ways, this is not my job. It's like a privilege. And, and every, ever since I got the, the, the stroke of luck to be able to be a working actor, my whole game plan has been, you know, take advantage of the situation as best you possibly can. And because, you know, I, I, I grew up in L.A. Most of my friends are actors, and it's dif difficult to get your foot in the door, so I just feel so honored to be able to like do what I do. That's it. I love my job. And you're so good at it. And I, the ladies were telling me like to watch you switch from like Leo, the friendly, nice guy on set, to like Leo, the actor, is like a switch that just happens. Like, do you have to really think about it anymore? Are you able to, to switch easily between like guy at craft services to like lead of this movie that is doing terrible, terrible, ungodly things? I don't know. That I kind of think of them as one and the same. I don't think of having to portray a character in a certain way, even if he is incredibly deplorable and reprehensible, like my character of Ernest, means that that's a, a shift in me. It's all, it's all one and the same. You know, it's, it's the creative process. And this movie was, this movie was 
something I'm so incredibly proud to be a part of. I really, really am. And I know, I know how much care, especially Marty took and all of us took, and really trying to tell the truth of, of this story and really listen, bring, bringing the Osage community as a part of it. So, you know, this was a sort of pushed aside part of American history. And yeah. it felt like, you know, we were honored to be able to tell this story. So when you tell the truth, as best you can, it, it's uh, it's an easier thing than knowing in the back of your mind that you're trying to create um, a character or a story that right. um, that is just completely from your own imagination. Truth, I love it. All right, so last thing, I was recently with Sharon Stone trying to interview her, and all she did was, was talk about this movie. Oh, really? She was like, it's a cinematic masterpiece, and then she talked about it for 25 minutes. I was like, Sharon, I really need to talk about you, but like, that's fine, we can talk about this movie. Um, and she had mentioned again a story she told in her memoir about when, and you were just saying, you know, it's a privilege to do this and not everyone gets so lucky, when they didn't really want you for Quick and the Dead. Mm -hmm and she paid your salary, and she said, I want Leo, I'm gonna pay the salary. Have you sent her a thank you gift? I've thanked her many times. You have? <laughs> I don't know if I sent her an actual physical thank you gift, but I cannot thank her enough. Can you, like, what is that? That's such a crazy she was. She was amazing. She did that with myself and, and Russell Crowe at the time. I think she saw our early work, and I think it was Romper Stomper and Gilbert Grape, and she said, these are the two actors I wanna work with, and you know, it's incredible. She's been a, a huge champion of, of, of cinema and giving other actors opportunities. So I am th very thankful. I think this year's flowers. It do, you know what? You're yeah. absolutely right. Tell your assistant in between these interviews. <laughs> be oh. like, Sharon's house, she's a double roses. Done. I was recently with Sharon Stone and I was trying to interview her and all she would do would talk about this movie. She was like, it's a cinematic <laughs> masterpiece. And then we basically, her interview turned into a conversation about this movie. Um, what does it mean to you to finally be able to be out in the world and be promoting this story, which is kind of bittersweet, hard to promote, you're excited about it, but it's awful, so, yes. I mean, I'm, I'm stoked because it's just, it's, fine, it's funny we're getting the story told that needs to be told, even though it's trauma and we see so much sadness in the world, it's something that very much happened and these are real people with, and it's still affecting them very much today. So to have this story for the Osage out to me just like means the world because this we all, all of our different tribes all have different stories that are, if not just like this, very similar. Mm -hmm. Talk to me about the casting process. When you get the call and team is like, hey, Martin Scorsese wants to see you for a movie. Like what <laughs> goes through your body and then how does that happen? It was wild. It was, um, it was it was an email for I think all of us, mm -hmm. and it was just like you know da 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 Martin Scorsese. It's like all you see it pops out, and you're like oh, okay. <laughs> and you're like kind of prepping, and then prior to that though we had a pretty extensive audition process, so we were prepped a bit and mm -hmm. like prepped a bit, but nothing can really prepare you fully for like a Marty audition. Yes. Um, but the audition process was. It was awesome. Like there was an opportunity to meet every one of the girls and kind of, you know, bounce off one another and see how we work together. Yep. Um, and I've always said from the beginning, like the casting was amazing. Like I think we look alike. <laughs> like I think we like. But I, yeah, the casting was amazing, and it was like a six or seven audition process. I'd mm -hmm. say. Yeah. Wow. And it was kind of cut into a little bit with COVID as well. Mm. Right. We, we had like a very long period where we kind of had to wait because of COVID and the production got stretched out for another year because of that. So it was a lot of waiting. And when we <laughs> finally found out, we were all so excited, <laughs> especially because a lot of us knew each other. Like Kara and I had already knew each other from previous projects. So I love it. Okay. First Leonardo DiCaprio movie you ever saw. Ooh. Romeo and Juliet. Of course! <laughs> Classic. Basketball Diaries. Oh my oh. god. No. Uh, for some weird reason, Titanic's the only thing coming to my mind. It's fine. It's fine. It was good. Jack Dawson. Jack Dawson. Jack Dawson. Um, Titanic. Um, and Leo in, real, in Leo in real life versus Leo work life. How? What are the differences? Wow. <clears throat> He's quite the character. It's interesting <laughs> to see him like switch it on and off because mm -hmm. it's so direct. Like Once you see him in scene versus like he can we can cut and then he's back to himself which is interesting because like when you have all these like notions of his characters from before like I did I have never met him before um it was so interesting to meet him in, in real life and see who he was 
I love this so much. Um, I think that, so my grandmother is First Nations, um, so I'm First Nations through family heritage, obviously, um, in Canada. And I think the thing that I've talked about with my family before in this movie is that it feels like First Nations people are always in these movies and these things in pop culture as, you know, these horrible genocides and these horrible... Do you think there'll ever become a day where a woman like you can just be the lead in a movie and the love interest and the sex symbol instead of it being a traumatic story? I feel like you have yeah. thoughts. I was like, oh yeah, absolutely. <laughs> like, okay. you know, like I'm, I'm a writer and one of the reasons I started writing is because I'm reading these auditions that are just mm -hmm. sexist and, you know, misogynistic and racist. And I'm just like, we can do better. And so I, it's basically, I started writing that and I'm like, yeah, I'm like, we're we're going to be leads. We're going to, they're going to show native joy. I mean, yes. come on. Mm -hmm. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. Like there's such a lack of that in, mm -hmm. in Hollywood. And I feel like it could be our, this movie and, uh, you know, shows a very important story, but it also made my heart break. Cause you're just like, this is just what people, the story that gets told over and over again. And that's really hard. Okay. Last thing. This is E! News. <laughs> Bump it up. Native joy. <laughs> um, uh, this movie, you're going to be at the Oscars, so I'm so excited. I mean, I'm allowed to say that. You can't say that out loud, but you're going to be there. I'm going to be there. It's going to be great. Have you thought about fashion for award season yet? Yes. Okay. Yes. You have. Definitely. Absolutely. I love this. Have we had fittings already? Are you like, I want to rep here? I want to rep here? I think I haven't had a fitting personally, but like, uh, top priority is native designers. Um, I think in my list personally, but... Uh, if you guys want to test or like, like, do you? I, like, I'm asking about going to the Oscars right now. Is your mind like blown? Yeah. You're like, oh, when I go to the Oscars, yeah. we, I, it's kind of like this weird thing where we're like, we'll see when we get yeah, there. Yeah, totally. totally. I think with like this whole strike and everything, it always feels like it, it's it's weird because it's like we, we can do things, but then it also they got taken away. So mm -hmm. it's kind of like, are we gonna have another strike or COVID yes. or you know? Oh gosh. No, no, we'll say that. <laughs> right. No, totally. And I feel like the three of you together are gonna be award season joy for me. So oh. this is I'm gonna see you every week until March. <laughs> so see you when I see you, and um, we're going to have so much fun, and congratulations on a beautiful performance. Really happy for you guys.